Pirupakh, you have been working uh, in AI, right? Yeah. And you are basically from uh, Dhenkanal. You did your uh, UG in Utkal University and then from uh, MTech in from IIT Bombay, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. And uh, you are a physics graduate, I think. Yes. Okay. So today they had a launch of Chandrayaan 3, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, can you tell me why Chandrayana 2 failed or what exactly happened from a physics perspective? Why exactly Chandrayana 2 was a failure? So, the reason of failure of Chandrayana 2 is uh, they failed to do a smooth landing on the lunar surface. And the uh, second thing is that uh, the uh, area in which they actually projected to land the rover that is quite limited. But this time they have kept uh, many alternate places. So that uh, if our uh, uh, the kind of relative velocity that we need, if that is pushing our uh, rover outside the landing zone, then so, also we have a bigger radius. Okay. So from a physician's understanding, why it is difficult for, to go for a uh, soft landing in the moon or any planetary system? Why is that? Yeah, because uh, it all depends upon the gravity and the relative velocity of uh, the rover. Or is and it because that you the to maintain. atmosphere of the moon is very thin, that is difficult to control the velocity? Yeah, I mean, so it's all about uh, the uh, relative uh, velocity, which is uh, actually a function of uh, the kind of thrust you are generating in the atmosphere and uh, the gravitational pull you have from the object. Achha, they have been uh, trying to develop something interesting. So how Chandrayaan-3 uh, they are ensuring that you know there will be no more crash landing. Have you read about it? Uh, actually, this time they are, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, they have increased the uh, surface area, the surface area in which they are projected to landing the rover. Second mm -hmm. thing is that they are now landing the rover in the south pole of the Chandrayaan, okay. which is uh, considered to be some more stable for landing. Okay. And this is going another, to be the first time. Another thing is to slow down the, I mean, to get the you know. Uh, aerodynamic drag to slow down the landing they have developed something called you know parachute like uh, you know reverse drag are you aware of that that usa has india has you know recently been testing that when they became successful they started you know chandrayaan 3 are you aware of that yes sir the same thing i actually being used by elon musk uh, star uh, link project Mm -hmm. And they are also doing the same thing whenever they are using their rocket for the second times, they just okay. get it back to the earth using the same technology. I think that is adopted from there only. Okay, fine. So you have a very interesting hobby. First, I saw that you watch a devotional series, right? Is it only series or you watch movies also? No, it is all kind of different devotional movies as well. So what kind of devotional series that you like? Anything that is based on our uh, traditions, our holy scriptures. Okay. So, any particular series that you like, that you can name it? Uh, recently, the series that is Mahabharata of uh, Star Plus. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, what is your take on Adipurus? Have you seen it? Uh, no, sir. I have not seen it. Means the initial reactions were quite harsh. So, I was planning to see that but I was uh, I didn't get the time to have that on whatever you read about it or whatever you know whatever the little knowledge yeah. that you gathered what is your take on that yeah did they tinker with the mythology uh, whatever uh, I got from my friends uh, information that uh, I found that they are not tinkering with the mythological point of view rather the point in uh, the way it, they are representing the story so okay. that is quite disturbed yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So, any particular swimmer that you like? Shall I follow swimming just to keep myself fit, but not as a sport? But yeah, I like Michael Phillips. Okay. Asa, there has been a recent news. Usually, people in villages, etc., they used to go to swimming in, say, ponds, etc., and there has been something news called brain eating amoeba. There has been a news. Have you yeah. Heard about it? yeah, in the contaminated waters or uh, uh, kind of ponds, they are there. So, what is the 
So where, where the cases are coming from? Which state? Any idea? Like people have went to take bath in those you know ponds and all, and then suddenly they got infected with the amoeba and they are dead now. So any, any which state those news? I think that he, that is a quite older news, so I cannot recall the name of the no, state. No, it's not older. It's been running for the past three four days. Okay. It's from Kerala actually. From my stagnant water, if the particular people are you know, going into bathing, they are you know, catching this particular brain, brain eating amoeba and then they are suddenly uh, found with PAM disease and eventually fatality rate is more than 97 98 percent. Okay, check that out. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm. So tell me five interesting things about Dengana. If I go visit Dengana, what should I do for? Mm. First is uh, Dhenkanal, in, you have uh, the largest uh, uh, village in the South Asia, that is Bhuvan. You will get uh, to know about a lot of things about uh, Bhuvan and uh, different landscape over there. Second thing is that uh, uh, the largest uh, Sai Ashram in Odisha is also located in uh, uh, just a, a few kilometers uh, away from Kapilas. There you could uh, experience a uh, devotional serene and sublime over there. And uh, the third thing is that uh, uh, Saptasajya and near Saptasajya there is a Salaivarani uh, village over there and there uh, the, it is famous for Dokrak which actually belongs to Mohenjo Daru period. So that okay. is one of the surviving site where this ad is still live. Okay. So you are saying there is a IVC site in Nekanad, in a civilization site in Nekanad. No, not an IVC side, but the lost was technique, which is used to create different kind of idols from brass. Yeah. That is, there that is, is there other terminology they use for lost was technique. Are you aware of it? Uh, lost, uh, sir, uh, I don't know. Sire Perdu, C A R E P E R D U. There is another terminology for lost words techniques. Okay. Anyway, so for the one more, one more, one more is pending. What is that? Ah, uh, yeah. So another thing is that uh, uh, we have Kapilas as well. Kapilas is considered as uh, one of the oldest uh, Sikh temple of uh, uh, Odisha, and uh, I think this is the fourth. And the final fifth one is that. Uh, uh, yeah, in case of Sapta there is a you can you can see there is a lining of seven mountains present, mm -hmm. and uh, on the top of that there is a Ram temple. It is <coughs> believed that uh, Bhagwan Ram spent seven days over there. Uh, you have two options. One is history, one is anthropology, right? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So you know, and uh, yeah, how anthropology is different from say sociology or other humanities, specifically sociology. I think uh, anthropology is a holistic study of human being, but uh, sociology quietly focused upon the social aspect of human being. So when we talk about anthropology, everything that is related to human being, it physical, social, cultural, or uh, psychological, everything is studied in uh, anthropology. We have studied uh, some aspect of medical science as well, but that is, I think, missing uh, in others. Okay. But uh, don't you think anthropology is more focused on primitive and tribal cultures? Whereas sociology is essentially born out of you know modern, uh, it looks at modern societies. Whereas anthropology focuses on tribal society, primitive societies. That is for some thinkers only. For example, um, uh, uh, Franz Boas he focused on studying uh, uh, mm -hmm. primitive cultures. But uh, when it comes to functionalism such as Malinowski, he focused on uh, a, a present day culture. Present day culture. Uh, he studied which part of you know? Civil, since we have three such as barbaric, then uh, civilization, then uh, currently we are in a civilized society. So he focused on, we should focus more on the civilized society because uh, his focus is more on studying the present than the past. Okay. Uh, in anthropology, one interesting part, one major chunk is uh, primer, primitive tribal groups and tribal groups, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So can you name some primitive tribal groups in India? And where they are located? We have uh, Santal, Honda, uh, uh, Bhil, then uh, Po tribe, Gon tribe, 
they are located uh, in madhya pradesh chatisgarh rajasthan and there are 13 pptgs uh, mainly gond and uh, four tribe located in uh, uh, jharkhand and odisha so how many pptgs there according to government of india totally in india 75 some pptgs community travel groups in odisha and how many are there in odisha in odisha there are 13s and uh, the uh, i actually know about two of them one is gond another is uh, mankadia tribes mankadia tribes are living where simalpal uh, baran simalpal they were also were in the news actually mankadia tribe but where where you know they were in the news in india have you read about that particular news in the recent times yes recent times uh some uh, dilation of kind of fluorosis disease among them due to consumption of uh, no, not like that mostly they are uh, extremely malnutrited so that is the reason why they have been constantly in the news okay and another one you said which one gond 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 where in odisha they are in the malkanagiri and uh, kalahandi district is it gond or gonda This Malkan Gonda tribe is also there. Yes, that is one of the favorite PPTs. Have you heard about tribes called uh, Gadwa, Parja, etc.? Sorry. Have you heard about tribes called Gadwa, Parja, something like that? Yeah, Gadwa, Parja tribe, Gadwa tribe. Yeah. yeah. So, what is the issue here? Acha, can you tell me some PPTs in Nara and Nikobar? Yes, sir. There is a question in uh, prelims this year for that particular tribe. Uh, sorry, I am not able to recall the name. Jarawa, Jarawa. Yes. Jarawa, Jarawa. Okay, check that out. Okay. Sentinel. So, so, so there is a bigger issue, isn't it? Uh, have you heard about you know, the? There is a always a some kind of. Tension going on between the tribal culture and the mainstream culture. So, <coughs> so why that? In your opinion, why that? You know, tension is there that tribal culture, culture versus mainstream culture. Yeah, uh, actually, there are some study conducted by some anthropologists. They say that, uh, uh, for example, I will uh, quote here the study by L. P. Vidyarthi. He said, he said that for any kind of developmental changes that we bring to the primitive culture by using the current cultures uh, it has to be in sync with uh, n m and s that is nature man and spirit so any kind of developmental idea which is development for us they cannot be development for the tribal culture if it is not going in consonance with their nature means the environment in which they are living their man means their people and their relationship and the spirit means the natural spirit in which they are living so i think the current strategy in which we are trying to develop this cultures is not uh, accordance with uh, this three aspect so that is why there is a tension acha uh, there is a debate going on about the uniform civil code right yeah yeah from a anthropological point of view there is a struggle going on between the tribal culture and mainstream culture because of you know because the government wants to go for the uniform civil code So yeah. my question to you is: Should the government of India should go for uniform civil code? I think the time has not come yet that we should go for a uniform civil court uh, right now. Why? Why you think that time has not come? We are a seventy-five years uh, mature democracy. So when we if not then when? Uh, because i think our society is too much divided in terms of uh, uh, tradition in terms of religions or in terms of this uh, uh, tribal culture that uh, still there are some laws for example the posco act uh, many tribals uh, they actually ma- get married before uh, uh, 15 before 18 and so uh, they do not know about that no it is we cannot just judge them because uh, uh, from anthropological point of view it is called cultural relativism we cannot just judge one culture with respect to our point of view See, so for them it is their you are saying some 
a tribe they go for child marriage isn't it yeah but child marriage is bad in india and there is a scientific proof that child marriage should be banned for example sati vivah custom so we have to yeah. ban it so does it mean that if there is a custom that has been running for thousands of years does it mean that you know we should you know let it continue no that is not what i am mentioning i say that we have to change the aspect uh, change the mind of the people towards this issue and this must be done in a smooth manner we just can't uh, get a law overnight to say uniform civil code and uh, expect everyone to follow the same so this will uh, this will be a disaster you is saying that you know go for a uniform civil code but supreme court in multiple judgments is you know is saying go for a uniform civil code so why we should not go for uniform civil code uh supreme court has also mentioned that you should go for uniform civil code so that uh, the complexity of the cases that uh, supreme court is dealing with that a little bit simplified and uh, in terms of constitution it is not in the part 4 it is in uh, the sorry it is in the part 4 of the constitution which is non judicial in nature so my question to you is should we regard custom should we regard religion should we regard tradition or should we regard constitution if there is a conflict Say religion, custom, or tradition versus constitution. Which one should prevail? As per Supreme Court of India, we should stick to the constitution whenever there is a conflict between. Uh, sorry. I think it is not the right time. Yeah. So still, there are uh, cases coming in our society where there is a lot of division. Uh, for example, Pew Research India. They. Uh, every year publish report about different uh, class between uh, religions and the mindset of people and it is not encouraging so in manipur there has been a violence going on what is the two you know, groups that are there engaged in that particular violence uh one group is a kuki tribe another uh, i'm not sure okay check that out maybe okay they practice a particular religion called sarna religion okay acha okay let me ask you another anthropology question darwin is a very big thinker as far as anthropology is concerned and he also talks about adaptive radiation uh, in your opinion why does you know adaptive radiation takes place adaptive radiation the causes are uh, geography for example if uh, uh, two culture are residing at the same uh, direction so sorry sir you are uh, asking this question in aspect of physical anthropology or uh, socio cultural aspect physical anthropology yeah in in terms of physical anthropology uh, there is an in- internal uh, urge to grow in size and to diverge from our progeny so that is one of the reason second is that the environmental compulsion we know that the uh, survival of the fittest so everyone just try to um, bring variation in them so that uh, they could uh, survive the uh, environmental or out- outside changes and uh, uh, specialization of nutrition is also one of the reason okay so suppose your friend uh, does ask you that you know uh, he has three options uh, either he can go to usa he can go to india or he can go to australia so and he is interested in studying adaptive radiation right so now which one part you know out of these three which particular place you will ask your friend to go and study where you can find where he can find you know adaptive radiation in abundance one is usa another two are uh, india and australia out of these three one you have to hmm. tell your you know refer your friend to go and study adaptive radiation uh the boss uh, the best case will be in in india why because uh, from the history it has been a place of uh, people migrating from uh, all over the world and staying over there for a longer so period of time so there 
adaptive radiation takes place. For example, when Darwin went to Galapagos, when he studied adaptive radiation, that is because in islands there is a scarcity of food. That's why a bird which was vegetarian essentially, when there was scarcity of food, some of them become non-vegetarians, started eating insects. So Australia is like that. We see a lot of adaptive radiation over there because of food scarcity. That is, we see a lot of marsupials, kangaroo, koala, etc. In India, we don't see, we don't find much adaptive radiation because it is a very harsh land and there has not been any such, you know, food scarcity that the species faces. Okay, so in these three, Australia will be the better option. Okay. Uh, back to another question. Uh, why the, achha, have you heard about something called Denisovans? These are kind of uh, people's uh, uh, type of people's means uh, classification of uh, humans. <laughs> Have you, achha, you are aware of Neanderthals, right? Yeah, yeah. So why, how they are, you know, why they are called Neanderthals? Any idea? So actually, I am very pretty weak in uh, archaeological anthropologies. Okay. Neanderthals are called Neanderthals because they are mostly found for the first time they were discovered in a cave in Germany called yeah. Neanderthal. There has yeah. been a particular, uh, I forgot his name, Swabe or Swate, something like that. One particular person has got Nobel for discovering Denisovans. Denisovans is again from a Siberian cave, the cave name is Denisovans and it is a distinctive uh, human species. Okay. The way we have Neanderthals. Similarly, this is also a very distinctive species. So, from anthropological, anthropological point of view, you should be knowing that. Anyway, so check that out, okay? When you get time, check that out before your interview. Now, uh, you have worked in AI, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Working in AI. Okay. So, should you be scared of AI? Uh, from my perspective, uh, we should not. Why? Because I think uh, the machine generated uh, uh, applications means uh, that we call AI that has a limitation of data. And uh, a time will come when uh, the kind of data we are feeding to the generate AI models, they will be the outputs of older AI models. So in the future, there will be a dearth of uh, human generated true level data so that will limit the functioning of the future AI models. That is recently being uh, published in a paper that we shouldn't care, uh, we shouldn't uh, uh, expect force from AI. So, how AI can be helpful? What are the threats and you know what are the threats emerging from AI, and how AI can be helpful? Uh, Means you are asking about different applications of AI in solving today's yes. problem. Give me one or two examples how it can help a rural farmer. Okay, uh, in AI, I have worked in a project called Precision Agriculture. They are uh, it is entirely depend upon AI. We'll just evaluate what will be your output from a particular land and uh, what uh, uh, correct amount of minerals that you should fed into the agricultural crop uh, and uh, the evaluation of your profit. So that will be quite in precision, agriculture, in precision agriculture, what are the variables that you, you know, input into the AI model so that it can give you suggestions, you know, how to go about it? What are the variables you exactly look for? So this uh, will be a completely survey basis, means we use a drone and uh, to get uh, what is the number of, uh, let's say, grains in each no noodles and uh, the uh, health of the plants. The minerals in, uh, in terms of the greenness of the leaves so that uh, we can expect what amount of output we are going to get then uh, the availability of water from the sprinklers obviously. okay so do you think AI will take away the jobs in india a lot of jobs from india yeah, sir. Sure. Uh, in the budget uh, session of this year, uh, our finance minister, Indira Sitaramanji, has uh, made a tagline on AI that make AI in India and make AI work for India. 
that means it's uh, signaling that uh, in future many jobs will be replicated uh, both in private and government sector by ai and uh, just a few days back the first uh, regional ai uh, news anchor launched in uh, odisha tv by odisha tv what is the name do you remember alisha uh, okay. also odisha is the first state to go for uh, ai in farming do you know the name of that uh, particular project ai farm no sir i don't know okay. amok krushi ai okay check that out acha you also have a very interesting another optional history so tell me why the french east india company fell but british east india company succeeded one one word answer uh the british east india company is a mostly independent and sovereign more sovereign and independent in comparison to the french east india company so this is the most crucial reason why there is a more government control in french east india company than the british east india company so that is a major reason of failure so british were successful because of the man on the spot theory that means whoever is on the field will take the decision it does not need uh, approval of the sovereign government whereas french needed that right yeah you also did your uh, did you know study geoinformatics right yes sir so what is uh, geoinformatics geoinformatics is also like an interdisciplinary subject where we get uh, knowledge from uh, computer science electrical engineering gis and uh, physics mathematics statistics and uh, uh, we just uh, use all this knowledge to extract useful information from uh, different satellite images Okay, so my uh, what is lidar? Have you heard about it? L I D A R lidar. Yeah, they are uh, light uh, is used as a uh, uh, electromagnetic radiation for uh, sensing. Can you tell me the full form of that? No, sir. I actually I forgot that. What, what does it do? Is it I, part of geoinformatics? Whatever the lidar does, can we call it geoinformatics? yeah it is used in some cases but uh, as you know lidar is not always helpful to get uh, information say when we have a cloudy uh, day then so lidar, lidar is not like detection and ranging and it is right. used for terrain mapping okay a 3d world you can you know through that you can build a 3d simulation of that particular terrain yeah so these iphone features the same so what is geodesy sorry geodesy uh sorry sir i'm not aware of this term okay so so for example because you have worked in say or studied geoinformatics uh our remote sensing sensing satellites are put up in lower earth orbit or higher earth orbit uh, they are actually put up in the Uh, higher altitude, higher altitudes. Higher altitudes, such as thirty-six thousand kilometer. Yeah, that uh, is a higher altitude. How will they will then then you know they will do the remote sensing work? If you look at satellites, if you look at the satellite, the satellite is sensing the Earth observation satellite. It will be put in the low um, lower orbit so that it can observe the Earth closely. So communication satellites are essentially put in higher higher orbits. Okay. So do also check that out. Acha, let me ask you something. You know, some situational questions. Uh, suppose you are a officer in posted in a particular job or tehsil, and one day you are doing an enforcement. While doing enforcement, uh, you saw that some group of four to five vehicles are doing illegal sand mining, and you catch them and you bring them to your office with the help of police. You catch them and bring uh, bring those vehicles to your office to. Put a fine on them or penalize them. Now suddenly, by doing so, uh, in between that, you get a call from your local politician or MLA saying that hey, those are my vehicles and you should not fine them and let them go. And he's bit, you know, harsh on them. How dare you caught me? You know, catch my vehicles and all that. How you respond to that? Okay, so my first course of action is that uh, I have to uh, uh, make the. Uh, since that is happening in the police stations, I have to make the record of that so that in future I have 
may not be liable for doing something wrong second thing is that uh, since uh, the call is from a mem uh, mla so uh, we need to talk to them so, so that uh, uh, the situation can be pacified and uh, uh, in such case uh, if uh, there is a strong opposition from the mla then there are two ways remaining either uh, first is to stick to the laws but that will be uh, a second choice my first choice will be to talk to the seniors and uh, uh, take the guidance from them that what should be done in this kind of situations okay suppose your senior immediate senior say that uh, don't indicate the mla leave those vehicles will you leave those vehicles yeah if that is a supported from the seniors and uh, if i am doing which is in accordance with the law then i should not hesitate uh, from doing so but you have caught someone doing illegal act letting them go is also an illegal act isn't it okay so so, so i misunderstood uh, the, the previous point means if my seniors is saying that i should let them go then in that case uh, uh, really? i have left with just uh, yeah i'll i'll deal with it in such a manner that uh, uh, i need to i'll give some more time so that uh, we can get uh, uh, something uh, better from my peers as well and if that is not working then in that case i'll stick to the law okay suppose you have penalized the vehicle now you get a call from the mla saying that hey is a because you penalize i will transfer you out what will you do since i have done no, i have not done anything wrong and uh, uh, i have informed the same cases to my senior schedule i have not done anything abruptly i managed the situations well i talk to the mla to pacify them i talk to my senior what should i do in the case and uh, after all that if i am find something which uh, i should do as an officer to an authority and if i have done that then uh, i think uh, there is no more justification is needed okay acha Uh, okay. Uh, so, what is, sir? What is happiness according to you when you feel happy? Sorry, what is the happiness? What is happiness according to you? Okay. So, happiness is something that uh, doing something which you, you actually want to do and achieving the thing which you actually want to achieve. Okay. So, tell me what makes you happy. Briefly, uh, moving uh, to place where. Uh, uh, what is your idea of success? Is it money or is it respect or is it something else? Uh, getting progress uh, every day, every day. That means it is just relative to my past. That is the success in any respect. Okay. If I am doing something good. Uh, Than my past, then that would be a definition of success. Okay. So you are saying it's a continuous process, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So now you are working in the AI. So why is you know going to the future? So why you want to be a bureaucrat? Why civil service? Yeah, actually, to become a civil servant is my long-term goal. But whatever I have done in this year, uh, that are uh, just like milestone in uh, towards the final destinations. So, so no, my final destination. Is you are in a field which has a future. So why do you want to come yeah. to or become a you know, become a civil servant? Sir, so there are many things that uh, we encounter in a life, but uh, we cannot just stick to one thing because of uh, its opportunity or because of the good things attached to it. We must have some goal in life, and my uh, whatever I am currently doing that is AI is uh, obviously futuristic, and uh, I have a lot of interest in that. But I know that I do not want to pursue the same for the rest of my life. So this is just a short-term goal. Okay. So you always wanted to be civil servant, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Then why did you go for M Tech? Was not needed. Why did you go for PG also? Because civil servant, you can become after graduation. So why did you go for PG and MTech? Actually, during my the graduation, I felt that uh, lots of people, my seniors, my peers, are uh, miserably failing in civil services, and uh, this is a kind of service which uh, demands a time, years of uh, dedication, 
and i think no one should shit uh, just uh, preparing for civil service all the years so it's a brilliant thing na if you have done pg you wasted your two years and then mtech another two years i think four five years uh those are i think education is a part of our nurturing skills it is not about the wasting time and uh, for uh, civil service project no actually this is a technical course and uh, i have been i have done so because i got the opportunity to do so and uh, i think i should not uh, lose that opportunity so i so, should i, I went for so essentially pg two years mtech two years and you have did job for two years right almost six years you do take part in debates and you play table tennis table tennis yes, while in office or how is it actually during the college time uh, i was playing and in the office uh, premises there are also arrangement for table tennis so we do play mostly in people in it they play table tennis because when they have no work they usually do that now we are posted in maharashtra na right? yes sir so what is happening over there as far as the politics is concerned so much of drama is going on over there why is that as uh, i think the government is not stable there are lots of pot trading is going on over there and uh, uh i think yeah these are the case means the instability of the government is uh, showing off its dirty faces right so you have been uh, talking to me so much over okay and a uh, couple of things we were talking so interview is over now i will talk to you what are the things you should do okay Uh, yes. Why not ask? Uh, you have a good profile, okay? And they might ask you suddenly, "Why do you want to go for civil service?" Out of it, you should have a better answer to that, okay? Because you have done you have taken from my degree and then you have done this, so prepare a better answer for that. Apart from that, uh, rest of the things are fine. They might ask about other things. That whatever the current affairs are, you should do. Okay, now you can say five, seven days current affairs, whatever you know. You know is in the news because you take part in debate look at the debatable news that has been there in the current affairs okay? okay and i have asked you certain things from anthropology certain things from history sort of the history i didn't ask much the history is a subject you cannot uh, you know revise now anthropology they might ask you certain things there or they might ask you ask you about any particular anthropologist that you like something like that. okay maybe tribal activities etc So dress up seven to ten days. Dress up the current affairs. We get to Odisha. We get to India. Okay. And profile is fine. But you are what you are doing is when I ask you about Adi Purush, one thing you should have should not have done is uh, you should have said said that you know I didn't like it or whatever the reason. Okay. Uh, you are saying that your friends didn't like. It. So you it's like you don't or uh, you are not ready to give an opinion because it might be controversial. So don't do that. Okay, try to have your opinion on that. Maybe that can be wrong. Not necessarily yeah. has to be. Clear, but have an opinion about it because you you are going to be leader. You cannot you know say he uh, my friends are saying so, so I am saying that. That's not the okay you know, the way you act. Okay, and because devotional series, so they might ask you anything. And anthropology students, so if you look at say Jalna, Lord Jalna also. There is a tribal god, isn't it? Then he got into Hindu food eventually. Mm-hmm. They might ask you about those things also. There was no aspect. Uh, if they, I don't know. They can ask a lot of things about you know from the personal aspect. So be prepared for that. Okay. And okay. hobbies, uh, you do swimming, uh, table tennis, debates. Okay. So. Any other thing that you want to ask? Uh, yes, sir. Once uh, Ajay asked me about the uh, uh, so the radiation question that is which one? Adaptive radiation. Adaptive radiation question. Yeah. So actually, it has been a time that uh, I have revised those subject of physical anthropology. These are quite cramming subjects. So I should focus on them. Means I should. No, not like that. Have a brief overview of the syllabus. Okay, whatever the terminology is there. Are you aware of it or no? Okay. Okay. Another thing is that in case of this, 
Yes, sir. 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 Uh, they might ask if you do think Elon Musk and others are, you know, are fools that they are, you know, uh, scared of AI. Or they might ask you why Chat GPT is going for, you know, has created a board of regulators to look into you know, the issues emerging from AI. So there is a threat that you should not dismiss. Okay. That prepare, try to answer it in a more holistic or in a better way. That's it. Okay. And this kind of situational question, uh, uh, my so answer is no three things I can tell you. Uh, never ever violate a law, no matter what, no matter the punishment. Because when you violate a law, you are culpable and you can be put in jail. Doesn't matter if your senior is saying to violate a law or the MLA is saying to violate a law. Never violate a law. Always be on the side of law. Okay. So you have but no. if your senior is saying ki, you know, leave those vehicles. You don't get it's illegal, so you cannot do that. You can go to the next level senior. Okay. You can go up in the hierarchy. That's not a reason. That way so okay. 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 So when you are confused, be on the side of you, no matter what. Okay. 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 If you have to choose between legality and morality also, choose legality. As bureaucrats, we cannot violate any law. Okay, some things might not be right from the ethical standpoint, but still, say for example, uh, there is a uh, there is a police officer and you suddenly catch a particular thief uh, who is stealing from a shop. Okay, and when you catch that particular boy, he tells you that he, his mother is hungry in, in their home. That's why you know, he stole that particular loaf of bread. Now, will you put him through the procedure or will you let him go? Your answer will be, you have to put him through the procedure, okay? And you can, before the judge, you can uh, advocate for clemency or plea for clemency, don't you know, punish him too much, give him some community service or something like that. But you have to put him through the process because otherwise you will be violating the law. That is right? true. Okay. So that will be much better. Rather than, you know, we, from moral point of view, we should think, yeah, okay, let him go. It's not a very, you know, big uh, crime, but small crimes eventually, small criminals eventually end up being big, big criminals. That is also true. Okay. So what kind of subject I should prepare for history of some, because it is like an ocean that to remember. <laughs> history, history, they can ask anything. Okay, so there is no boundary. If the, uh, mostly, I don't know, they are recently a lot of, uh, Old names have been, you know, being changed. What is your opinion on that? They can ask anything. Okay. So, have a whole book of the subject, but you cannot prepare it, you know, too much. Say, for yes. example, uh, say Kalapada attacked uh, Jagannath Temple. They might ask you, Kalapada worked for which dynasty or which rulers? Are you aware of it? Uh, trying to recall. Hema Chandra Vikramaditya, Hema? No, no. Uh, Pala Pada worked for a uh, Islamic dynasty called Korani dynasty from uh, West Bengal. Okay. Here is general over there. Then he attacked uh, Jagannath. So that kind of thing they might ask. Okay. Jagannath called etc. read about them. At least have little bit, you know, brush up on what is happening. That should be fine. Okay. But mostly I think they will ask you around your you have enough material to ask, so I think you will be to go Okay. And when you are saying something, uh, say it with clarity. If you are wrong, you can correct yourself. Okay. That's not the issue. But no. don't give, uh, you know, <laughs> escapist answer. Ki my friend said so, ki this can, no, not like that. Okay. They don't appreciate that. Okay. That will sound like that will sound like you are not trying to give a, you know get into the mud. You are just trying to you know stay clear, stay clear. 
but the kind of situation in which we are not actually present there and we have inf just information about the situation from others there how can we just no, get a stand no, no, no. but if they are to be any proof and what is your opinion on that so i haven't seen it so whatever my opinion is is uh, based on the third person accounts that way you can say and from our, whatever i read and whatever i you know, come across about the thriller movie uh, i think they have you know the way they portray it, it is disregard to the uh, great epic simple okay, okay. क्वेश्चन No sir, these are the question doubts. So, when is your interview? Day after tomorrow. Day after tomorrow. Seven days, na? Okay. We had a lot of offline students, so the interview schedule, you know, took some time. We are the only one who is doing online. Rest of them are not doing offline. But anyway, good that we did. Okay. Yes, we will do well. I have, I am trying to, uh, I am trying to put you in a corner, give you, you know. <laughs> yeah. to a lot of things to work on so that we are prepared for the interview okay. yeah sure sir. thank you mr clark good night good night sir may i leave now yes yeah thank you